imagine that I had two identical envelopes. I'll take a $100 bill and place it inside one of them. Then I'll shuffle the two envelopes around so you do not know which is which. I'll helpfully label one of them A and one of them B. In a moment, I'll give you the opportunity to choose either A or B. You'll open up the envelope, and if there's $100 in it, it's yours. If it's empty, you get nothing. Fortunately for you, I'm feeling generous today. Before you choose which envelope you want, I'll give you an opportunity to buy some information. Specifically, I have a cylinder of five balls. If you want, you can pay a price and pick one of the balls out of the cylinder and see what it says. On three of the balls, I have written down the correct envelope, the one that contains the $100. On the other two balls, I have written the other envelope. For example, if I put the $100 bill in envelope A, three of the balls would say A, and two of them would say B. Likewise, if I put it in the B envelope instead, then three of the balls would say B, and only two would say A. I now have two questions for you, one easier and one more difficult. First, the easier one. How much are you willing to pay to see a random ball out of that cylinder, given that your alternative is to choose one of the envelopes without any additional information? Second, imagine that I allowed you, after looking at that first ball, to look at another ball out of the cylinder. How much more are you willing to pay to see another one? And while you're working on that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. You can learn more about them in the video information below. Let's start with the easier question. To make the explanation a little bit simpler and without loss of generality, imagine that I had put the $100 bill into envelope A. So we have three A balls in the canister and two B balls. In order to think about how much you should be willing to pay to look at one of those balls, you need to think about what your alternative is. If you take no new information, then you have a 50% chance of selecting the correct envelope, and therefore a $50 expected winnings. You'll win $100 50% of the time, and $0 the remaining 50% of the time. If you grab a ball, you're going to increase your chance of winning. That's because you can select whichever envelope corresponds to the ball that you get. And because the balls have a 60% chance likelihood of corresponding to the correct envelope, that means you have a 60% chance of getting the correct envelope yourself, and therefore have $60 in expected winnings. So if your entire goal here is to maximize your expected winnings, you would be willing to pay no more than $10 to learn that new piece of information. That question was straightforward. The second question is more complicated and can trip some people up. You probably have an intuition that the second ball is going to give you more information, and that's right. And you might also think that having that extra information is going to be helpful, and so you're going to be willing to pay a little bit more to get it. Perhaps not as much as the first ball because you're going to have diminishing marginal returns on that new information, but nevertheless, that information will still be helpful to some degree. However, as a general life lesson, new information is only worth acquiring if that new information might change your behavior based off of what you see. What that means for this problem is that a second ball is only worthwhile if it is pivotal. If you would not want to change your strategy based off of what you see by that second ball, at least some portion of the time, then there is no point in paying for that new information. That is going to come at a direct cost for you, and it's not going to change what you would have done by just looking at a single ball by itself. It turns out here that no matter what the second ball says, you have no active incentive to change what you would have done had you only followed the first ball's advice. As a consequence, the actual value of that second ball is zero. To understand why that's the case, it might help to map out the probabilities. 
with the first ball you draw, there is a 60% chance that you will get the correct one, and a 40% chance that you'll get the wrong one. That's again why you should follow the advice of the first ball. From there, the relative probabilities of the second ball depend on what happened with that first ball. If you drew the correct ball in the first place, then there are going to be two correct balls and two incorrect balls left over which means that you have a 50-50 shot of getting the correct ball after that. If you drew an incorrect ball in the first place, well, now there are three correct balls and one incorrect ball left, giving you a 75% chance of grabbing the correct one on your second chance. If we map out all of those probabilities, there is a 30% chance that both of the balls will say the correct thing, a 10% chance that both of the balls will say the incorrect thing, and a 60% chance that the balls will give you conflicting information. Let's first look at the case where the draws are giving you the same piece of advice. Clearly, you should follow what they are saying. After all, if we think about what happens conditional on being in a stage where both of the draws are the same, there is a 75% chance overall likelihood that you are going to get the answer right by following the advice of what you have drawn. That's because 30% of the time overall, you're getting the correct draws, and only 10% of the time, you're getting the incorrect draws. So if we use Bayes' rule to calculate our updated belief about what likelihood we are to be right by choosing whatever the balls have told us, we're going to get it right 75% of the time. But notice, that the second draw is not pivotal here. Had you just followed the first piece of advice, you would have taken an identical measure in each of these cases, and you would have not had to have paid any money in the process. Now let's look at the second case. There's a 30% chance likelihood overall that you'll have the first draw be right and the second draw be wrong. And likewise, a 30% chance overall likelihood that the first draw will be wrong and the second draw will be right. What that means is that conditional on getting conflicting pieces of information, you're completely uncertain what to do. Each of those is equally likely. And so by Bayes' rule, once again, conditional on having arrived at this stage, there is a 50% likelihood that A will be the correct envelope and a 50% likelihood that B will be the correct envelope. And this is why you should not bother paying for that extra piece of advice. Even if the second ball reports to you something different, meaning that the new information is not simply reinforcing your original decision, you ultimately end up indifferent anyway. The clincher, though, is that you've paid a cost in the meantime. If instead you simply went with whatever the first ball said, you would end up in the exact same outcome, but not have to pay that cost. As a result, the value of the second piece of information is literally zero. To be clear, even though you are unwilling to pay for a second piece of information, there is some value that you are willing to pay for a third piece of information. Why is that? Well, it's possible that the cylinder will pop out the wrong ball initially. And if you have three draws in total instead of just two, it's possible for the cylinder to then correct that by having two of the correct balls come out afterward. Because you have two things saying the correct thing and only one thing saying the wrong thing, you are now going to change your decision from what the initial draw would have otherwise made you inclined to select. And as a result, you'll end up with $100 more of the time than you would have otherwise. If you enjoyed this puzzle, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I hope to see you next time. Take care.